If you guys are lacking coins for all the new cards that are out, then check out MuleFactory.com. They're the cheapest site I've found for coins. They deliver in five minutes. And if you use TGC Kurt 5 at checkout, you get 5% off your order. Check them out with the link down below now. What's up, guys? Kurt here, and welcome to a brand new FIFA 10 to FIFA 17 slash 18 transfer video. We're going to be looking at some of the last transfers on deadline day, and we're going to see how those players have changed throughout the history of FIFA and maybe a little look at what they might be like in FIFA 18, of course. That is the whole point of it now. FIFA 17, we're not interested. We're going to see these players that have changed over all these years and then have a little idea of what they might be like for FIFA 18 because, of course, that is what we want to know about. Before we get into the episode, though, I do want to tell you guys, of course, about OneFootball. This video is brought to you by OneFootball, and you guys need to know they are the best football app you can download. They have some brilliant different aspects of the app. The main one for me over this window has been the transfers. I've loved being able to keep up to date with the transfers. It helped me to do this video. You scroll through here. You can see completed transfers. You can see all recommended ones, potential ones, rumors, all these different things. See, Lloyd Remy, I didn't actually know before making this video that Lloyd Remy had gone to Las Palmas. I found it out on this app. It's so sick for stuff like that. But you can also get all your scores. For me, in this case, I can look at the Premier League fixtures. Loads of different stuff like that. So if you want to check it out, click the link in the description down below. Get one football downloaded. But without any further ado, we're going to start off with our first player in this episode. And it was one of the deadline day signings to Chelsea. And that is Danny Drinkwater. He has changed a fair bit. He started off in FIFA 10 at Huddersfield. He had a bit of a varied start off to his career. He went to Huddersfield and then he went to Cardiff. He was in and out, kind of not really featuring too much at all his teams. He went to Barnsley and then he kind of went to Leicester and that was when he started to settle in. Second season at Leicester, amazing year. Got into the team of the season, obviously in the championship at the time. Started to improve a lot. FIFA 15, silver card, he's getting a bit better. Then he was noticed. They won the damn league. He got a team of the season card he was a 74 red he got his upgrade to 80 now what I'm interested to see is what he's gonna be in FIFA 18 now let me know down below what you guys think he might be is he gonna go up to like an 82 83 I don't know was he that good last season I'm not sure is he even gonna play much who knows but it's gonna be really interesting to kind of see the setup that Chelsea are going to end up going for and what could potentially happen with this guy. But let's move on to the next one. Next up we have one with uh, not too many cards in his history on FIFA but someone that I think it's important to have a look at because like myself I'm sure not too many have too much of an idea about this guy. He signed for Chelsea on deadline day. I was curious to see he's actually 25 so he's not crazy young but he's he's been around a little bit. He's still got a chance to grow but 20, 25 and only a 77 rated I'd never really heard of him. I think I'd seen the name like two or three times before that's it very interesting but of course like I said he has signed for Chelsea but his history is as follows he started off playing for Atalanta as a right midfielder I'm gonna double check if that was on loan or if he was already owned by Torino at that point because I'm not sure he started off he was owned by Atalanta beforehand he was actually owned by Atalanta in 2011 to 2012 then was bought by Avellino went there for three seasons I think they're City B side let me double check yeah they I think they got relegated from City B last season actually but then he was bought by Torino played there for two years after Atalanta these two seasons here and then of course has just signed for Chelsea played 50 Six games for Torino. He's not really a goal scoring fullback. He's played a couple times for Italy too, four caps under his belt. He is kind of what Chelsea want. He's an actual right wing back to replace Victor Moses. Is he going to be any good? I do not know. I'm sure we'll find out this season. But uh, another signing for Chelsea. These two will be getting a strong link next season. You just wouldn't think it would both be at Chelsea. Seems quite bizarre to me. This next one nearly also signed for Chelsea. They really did try and get their business done late on. He ended up going to Tottenham in the end. That is Fernando Llorente. Obviously bought uh, from Swansea and gone to Tottenham. But if we look at his history, I'm actually going to load up his full Wikipedia so I can get everything completely right. He was Athletic Bilbao for FIFA 10. He was owned by them. Uh, he was actually there for eight years. So it's pretty impressive from 2005 to 2013. So that means he has a couple of cards, including this team of the season one uh, for a season in which he got 17 goals in 32 games. That's not bad at all. And he had one more season there. It wasn't quite as good. Only got four in 26, but he was then bought by Juve. Had a fantastic season for you at Juve. Scored 16 in 34. You can't really complain about that. And then he had a couple more poor seasons again. He got 31, uh, 7 in 31 this season, um, right there for FIFA 15, and then just got 4 in 23 for that season for uh, Sevilla. Now, 
he seems to be very hit and miss. You look back through all his history, he went through a spell of like 14, 14, 18, a couple of really good seasons, and then he'll have a 4, and then a 16, then a 7, and it's not like he wasn't getting game time. He was playing over 30 games every season and was really hit and miss. Uh, then obviously he came to the Premier League, he was with Swansea last year, and scored 15 goals. It went completely under my radar. I thought he only got like 8 or 9 last season, but obviously all summer, all people have been talking about is his goal record when he was linked with Chelsea and Tottenham. So, I mean, he could end up being a really good signing for Tottenham, or he could have one of those off-seasons. I really don't know. I don't know how much game time he's going to get. It's a really weird one, but I think it could be a good signing. I don't know. Next up, we have Loic Remy. As I mentioned, this is one that... Uh that I actually found out thanks to the One Football app. I believe he was actually linked to go to Brighton right on deadline day, but it turned out um, that he'd already agreed the deal with Las Palmas. But that's who he signed for. We're going to look through his history. He actually started off playing for Nice. At least that was his first uh, card on FIFA. He was at Lyon beforehand. Uh, 26 goals in 68. He then went to Marseille after one season. He had three seasons at Marseille before moving on to QPR, as you can see there. He had the exact same uh, games played. 68 but scored 26 for, uh, 27 for Marseille rather than the 26 he scored for Nice. He was bought by QPR. I'm sure you guys remember that season. He was fantastic. Second half of the season. Um, when QPR had all the money in the world. He was then loaned to Newcastle, and I thought he was brilliant. He scored 14 in 26. I wanted Arsenal to sign him at the time. Instead, he went to Chelsea. He's been plagued with injury pretty much for the last few seasons. He didn't really feature as much as he wanted for Chelsea. He went on loan to Palace last year. He played five games. I'm pretty sure he started the season, played one game and got injured. Less than two weeks after signing, yeah, he returned for treatment, uh, was out for most of the season. Then he came back second half of the season, played a couple games, and it was just kind of it. It did not work out for Remy. Going over to Las Palmas now, it's an interesting one because they seem to be able to get the most out of these sort of players as of late. Obviously, Kevin Prince Boateng is a bit of like a mercurial midfielder, hard to settle in places. He did really well there. I know he's now left, but I think Lloyd Remy could have a really good season there if everything goes to plan for him. A lot of these uh, players are just like the biggest sort of situation of almost men. They could go to their clubs this season and become team of the year sort of, well, team of the season sort of players for their respective clubs, or they could go and be absolutely abysmal. Next up, though, we have Boyan. He's gone on loan to Alaves in Spain this season. Now, he has been, like, I've loved this guy for years. I've always thought he's brilliant, but he's just never actually, like, done what he needed to do. It's so frustrating to follow his career. So, I'm sure you guys know he started off at Barcelona. He played 104 games for Barcelona in the four years he was originally there. If I get him on the screen, you'll see he had this Barcelona card. He then moved to Roma after a troubling sort of spell. He went to Roma for a couple of seasons. He only played 33 games in two years. Not the best. But also went on loan to AC Milan. It was just such a weird one. He couldn't settle in at all these big clubs. He was at Milan. He returned to Barcelona. He went to Ajax. Like This is where you think this guy could finally settle in. Didn't really settle in, but he went to Stoke, and you know, he kind of did settle in. The first season, he did really well. His exact stats were, half first half of season, 16 games, 4 goals. Second season, 27 games, 7 goals. That's a return you can't complain for your attacking midfielder, but he just couldn't make it work. He then went on loan to Mainz uh, this season. He's gone on loan to Alaves for this, uh, sorry, he went on Mainz last season for the second half of the season. Alaves this season. The guy just really can't make it stick. He's got international caps. He's done some interesting things, but this guy... Just can't make it work. Alaves doesn't really seem like the best place for him to go, if I'm honest. But I really want him to turn this career around and make it something special. He's 27. He's close to reaching some sort of peak. He just needs to make it happen. I don't know if it will. The amount of players on this episode, though, that have like a full history is crazy. Usually, you only tend to find it's a few of the players, but we've had some some pretty good ones. But we're gonna we're gonna pull it back a little bit for this one, and we go on to Gregor Krochoyak. Definitely got it wrong. With him being Polish, I'd actually think the W is like a V sound, so it might be Krytroviak, maybe? Krytroviak, you'd think it'd be a W. Like Wojciech Szczesny. V I don't know what I'm saying. This guy started off at Bordeaux in 2008. He was there for four years. Didn't really feature for the team. He went on loan to Stade de Rem and Nantes. Played a lot of games for both of them. He had a two-year loan for Stade de Rem and played 54 games. They eventually bought him in 2012. And he actually improved quite a lot during his time there. His actual original FIFA 13 card is like 68 rated. Got upgraded to 74. Then got this uh, 76 rated card. He was playing a lot for Poland. He's got 45 Polish caps. He's gone up for all the youth. He then moved to Sevilla and had two amazing seasons there. Before setting the world on fire at the Euros. He was loved 
at Euro 2016. He was one of Poland's best players. He was tremendous. But then he was bought by PSG and it just did not work. He didn't fit the system, didn't suit how they wanted them to play and now he's moved to West Bromwich Albion. It's insane. And I think he could be really, really good for them. He suits them to a T, a physical player, strong box-to-box -box kind of midfielder. He's good on the ball, good passer. He could really, really do a job at West Brom. And I cannot wait to watch this guy. I know Arsenal play West Brom, I think, at the end of September. We always lose to him, but I'm still looking forward to that game because they've got some interesting signings. And I think they could be good this year. I'm going to start to steamroll through these next few because I feel like this episode has been going on for quite a while already and we've still got a few to get through. So next up, we have Serge Aurier. Obviously, the new signing for Tottenham. Just what they needed to replace Carl Walker. But he started off his career at... Uh, Racing Club de Lens, de Lens, definitely got that wrong. Uh, he was a bronze card, good pace. He moved to Toulouse. I remember this card because he went from French to Ivorian, and that's one that always, every time there's a nation change, you know I'm on it. He had a couple seasons at Toulouse before moving to PSG. The guy started to pick up. He's had a couple improvements on his cards, and this year he had a big boost to an 83 rated card. He hasn't, doesn't seem to be part of the plans of PSG anymore. He had a few controversies throughout the last couple of seasons as well. The guy. He's an interesting personality. It's going to be interesting to see how he gets on at Tottenham. But uh, if he plays well, it's going to be very good because that is exactly what Tottenham needed was to replace Carl Walker. Next up, we have the man that changed uh, London for Liverpool. He has gone from Arsenal to Liverpool, of course. That is Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. The guy has had an interesting career. Uh, yet to get, I think, two uh, more than two goals in a league season. But I think he could do a little bit better at Liverpool. I think maybe Klopp will bring the best out in him. But... But uh, he started off as a right midfielder for Arsenal, a very, very pacey winger, bit of dribbling, but not too much else to offer early doors for Arsenal. He moved on to the left wing, started to get a little bit better on the ball, his passing was improving, still not really much of a finisher, so his shooting stayed quite low, but 76 left winger at the age he was is not bad at all. Still looked like a ninja turtle though, like he always said in interviews, I don't know why, he always used to mention that. I don't know what happened to his card in FIFA 14, but it's just a mess. I'm pretty sure it's a 77 rated right winger. Moves uh, up to a 78 rated right midfielder, always playing as a winger. Uh, obviously right mid, right mid. He played right wing back for the second half of last season for Arsenal, but I think he's actually going to be a centre mid for Liverpool. That's why he chose Liverpool over Chelsea, because he wanted to play in the middle. Is he going to even get into that squad in the middle? I do not know, but it's going to be interesting to see what his card could be. If he's like a 70, uh, a centre mid, like 79, 80 rated with like 85 plus pace, which whatever it will be, four star skills, he could be an unreal centre midfielder for next year's game. But we'll move on to the second. Okay, next up we have a player that personally I actually really liked and was gutted when he moved to City originally. That is Samir Nasri. I believe he signed for... Um, Antalya Sport, I'm pretty sure. I probably should check, but I'm not going to. He was obviously at Arsenal. He had a couple good seasons as he was finishing his time there. This FIFA 11 card was absolutely unreal. I remember that was when I started my YouTube with a road to glory, and he was in the middle of it, and I absolutely flipping loved it. He moved to City, got this 86 rated card. Unreal on FIFA at the time. 85 rated again, still very, very good. It was a shame he got moved to a left mid in FIFA on this year because... Until then, he was literally just such a sick cam in the game. Four-star skills always was just an absolute boss. Went down to left mid, then obviously had his season at Sevilla. Didn't even play much. He played 23 games. Didn't really fit in that well. On a bit of a steady decline. And then, of course, like I said, he signed for Antalya Sport this window. I'm pretty sure it was on a free. I assume his contract finally ran out at City and that uh, he just hadn't really been part of their plans for three or four seasons now. And then we're going to finish it off with Hesse, the guy that uh, broke my dreams after travelling three hours to Stoke away, which was great fun. Uh, obviously, he's just signed for Stoke and has had a bit of an up and down career. I think it's going to be very, very good for Stoke. I feel like he's a sort of club now where they've got these kind of superstars that can just do what they they want. If Kese wants to, he has a free roam up front basically and they've, they're so well drilled behind him, I think they, he could actually do something quite good. But obviously he was at Real Madrid beforehand, he came up through the youth setup. He had that striker card, I loved it. The FIFA 14 striker card was sick. He went on to the left for FIFA 15, had a gold card. Then he went to PSG, he was at Las Palmas for the second half of last season. He's had a lot of really weird moves around, but he's now gone to Stoke. It's only on a one-year loan, only on a one-year loan like the Las Palmas deal was, but he's still owned by PSG. I wouldn't be shocked if there's some sort of like option to buy at the end. I'm not sure if it is, I don't know, but it wouldn't surprise me. That seems like quite a Stoke thing to do to try and get the player afterwards. And PSG, I don't think really need any more wingers, do they? I think they've spent enough on wingers this window. So I think it could be very, very good for Stoke. I think we're going to be seeing 
seeing a ones to watch card for him maybe if they do loans. They did for his uh, last Palmas card, so you'd think they would actually next year. Who knows? We'll soon find out. But guys, that brings us to the end of this video. If you guys enjoyed it, don't forget to smash that like button. Sub if it is your first time watching. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys.